to use a smaller one. This one's too big. And for and for a similar reason, please spare me the comments about my poor aim because I have elbow tendonitis and it's bad enough to affect my hammer and hatchet aiming. When I was a kid, I remember my dad yelling at me. He would say, however I tell you to do something, you do it exactly the opposite way. <laughs> yeah, maybe he's right. No, not maybe. He was definitely right. But the thing that he didn't get was that I wasn't doing it intentionally to get under his skin. I trusted my dad. If he said something worked, then it worked. There was just no second guessing him. If he said it worked, it did work. So I figured if I already know that that way works, why wouldn't we want to try a different way? Let's find some other way that works also. Well, that caused that knot there caused significant tear out. I might have to switch over to I may have to switch over to my knife to get that smooth. That isn't just your typical log there. Take a look. It actually has a route that fits the hollow. So it locks into place. And what makes that convenient is because you can split kindling right here and your hand is safely out of the way. Isn't that nice? It's not fully dry yet. I noticed that when logs are still green, a hatchet just doesn't want to sink into them very well. That's better. Although I think this blade is a bit dull too. Why are all the blades in my life dull? I can never keep them sharp enough. Always cut away from you, right? No, that's not necessarily true. Always cut away from you until you're experienced. Then you can determine to what extent you want to cut towards or away. Oh, but you don't want to take advice from somebody with a bandage? Bandages don't necessarily uh, indicate a lack of skill. More likely is the case that they indicate uh, a frequency of skill. In other words, exercising your skill increases your probability of a bandage. Besides, if you're not getting bandages, then you're not improving your skills. Okay, that's good enough to get to the point. I've made a mallet. What is the point here? Let me show you. My story about doing things differently does apply here. No, how about up there? That looks right. 
Because if we're not questioning our assumptions about doing how we do things, then we're not going to find ways to do things that might be superior. In this case, kindling. Oh my goodness, is that easy. My aim was a little off, but put it in the center. Don't try to do it a third at a time because run out. It wants to go down the middle, so if you try to start to one side or the other, it will just run out off the edge. So pretty much every single time, try to cut them in half, no matter how small. Uh, I like to find a nice straight grained piece of pine. This is not that straight, see the curve there? But it works well enough. Don't push with your hand. It's not worth it. That axe head is pretty sharp. Look at that. They're like toothpicks. Well, not quite that good, but pretty close. I guess there are a million ways to do that. This, and probably the best way to make kindling is, like I said, always trying different ways to do it. Because then it kind of breaks up the monotony. But I don't mind this. I, I like to split kindling. It's, it has like a certain, certain, I don't know, therapeutic quality about it, doesn't it? There's a satisfaction to doing it. Frequently I'll show something like this and I'm accused of reinventing the wheel. Please don't be so crude or insulting. Don't get the wrong idea either. I've never claimed to invent anything. I simply move the pieces around. I find pieces and rearrange them, and I'm not doing anything that people haven't already done thousands of years before I got here. So, there's nothing original about any of us. But there's also such a thing as new to me, and when you do find something that works well, You should show it off. Then I like to keep it nice and warm while I'm doing it just to bake out any of the moisture that's in it. Don't leave it off up there, obviously. I'm just sitting here by the fire, and when I'm done, I go and put this over there on the pile. You don't want to burn anything down. Remember, 
I'm pulling for you. We're all in this together. <laughs> See you later.